So in this tutorial, what we're going to do is have a look at making some simple rocks entirely within 3ds Max, trying to eliminate the sculpting pipeline, not because it's not necessary, primarily because this is just a quick way of producing rocks uh, that aren't necessarily stylized. If you were looking to implement rocks within Darksiders, for example, then the art style would suggest that you do, would need to go in there and sculpt rather than approach this method. So what I have here is quite simply a cube with sufficient number of edge loops on there. I just go to the bottom of my stack. So remember, we discussed trying to maintain all the modifiers on your stack. And then the idea is that ultimately you generate your high from there and ultimately your low is also within that. So I've added a Spherify modifier on there. That's essentially going to turn it into a nice quartered sphere. I put a turbo smooth on top of that to try and add additional detail on there. And the idea is that we are going to use essentially textures or a form of texture to essentially apply to this and displace the actual geometry. So if I click on my displace over here. Sudden change to it, suddenly it looks like something that's like a large piece of rock which has got chips in it. So how is that done? If we click on displace over here within the map option, if I was to remove the map, it's going to allow me to click on that and I can define what map type I want. In this instance, I just have a cellular map. And within that cellular map, there's lots of options within that to vary the tiling and the orientation. You would need to experiment with that. If I click on Material Editor, M for the Material Editor, I'm just going to drag this across over here and I'm going to click on Instance. Now what that's going to do is going to allow me to make modifications to this and I can see those modifications within uh, the actual asset in real time. So naturally if I adjust the tiling, you can see the tiling has an impact on that. And you can experiment with this till the cows come home. Uh, there's lots of interesting features within there. You could change the cell characteristics to chips, to fractal, lots of potential options. So I'm just going to undo a few steps just to get it back to what I had previously. And I'm just going to get, we'll, we'll leave that on there. The very next option on top of that, I've added a noise modifier just to add an additional level of variation. You don't necessarily have to have that on there. You could modify the seeds and produce all kinds of wonderful variations. Or, or you could, in fact, just modify the actual values. So the idea is that these particular modifiers just allow me some additional functionality. If I was to vary this and produce five or six variations of this rock, I could just make those modifications within that. So we're slowly but surely just adding on additional modifiers to get the shape that we want. I've added an additional displace modifier on top of that. And this particular one over here, it has a noise map on there. So if I was to just drag that along to here and instance that, you can see there's my noise modifier. And again, there's lots of options to change it. All kinds of weird and wonderful effects you can achieve. And what it's doing is it's using this actual texture to modify the actual physical polygons and verts. Hence the reason why we needed the Turbo Smooth. If we turn that off, you can still make the modifications as such, but you won't see it because it's clearly too low poly. Just undo a few steps. Get back to this point over here. So on top of that, I've added an additional modifier on there. Quite a large amount of noise on there just to change that shape. And then finally, I've just added an FFD modifier on top of that as well. And the beauty of the FFD modifier, in this instance, I've used a 2x2x2, two by two by two, but ultimately it just allows me to select individual areas and produce all kinds of varying shapes, as the case may be. I've just used a 2x2x2. Two by two by two. Obviously, there are options for 4x4x4. Four by four by four. This will give us a greater level of control. We could quite literally just select these two, adjust it, maybe flatten off the top as the case may be. And as you can appreciate, ultimately, it just allows us to produce all kinds of variations of this. You've got the bend, the twist, all these other modifiers can be applied to this. And ultimately, the benefit is going to be we can create numerous levels of rocks just using this methodology. So let's try and bake this out 
and ultimately put it onto a law and then we will eventually put it into Substance Painter and then eventually we'll put it into UE4 and I'll explain the process behind uh, the types of textures that you want to be outputting out of Substance and ultimately how to implement them within UE4. So channel packed textures. So essentially we would have three textures overall. We would have our Bido, we'd have our normal map and a channel pack texture which will contain three textures. So that would be our roughness, metallic and our ambient occlusion all combined and packed into one. So we'll do the initial step first of all which is we'll just bake out our normal map. Although we are going to ultimately use Substance Painter to do this, regardless we will do it within this just to reiterate the process itself. So if I was to turn off Turbo Smooth, it's going to generate my low poly. Clearly you can see, in my opinion, I think that's just a touch too low poly. So we could certainly try baking that out onto that level Maybe it will work. I mean, to be fair, it will work, but it won't look as good as naturally being slightly more detailed. So I'm going to call this HP underscore rock. Let's duplicate this. And obviously LP underscore rock. I'm just going to go to my Turbo Smooth and in my low poly variant, one I think would probably work quite well. There's additional scope for removal of edges. Again, depending on, on, on your scene and the complexity, feel free to keep it at one or certainly experiment with it being slightly smaller. If it's the case, you are going to be using lots and lots of variants uh, or lots and lots, lots of uh, rocks. So let's just collapse that. So now we have our low poly rock and we have our high poly rock. Naturally, we do need to convert to a poly and also we need to unwrap this. So if you remember rightly, at the very beginning we started off with a cube and a default cube always has its UV map already created for you. So if I was to just go to the unwrap editor, we can see here, if you look at this carefully, top of the cube, the sides of the cube and the bottom of the cube. So in many ways the unwrap is actually done for us. We wouldn't need to do a great deal. We could just essentially peel it and leave it at that. So before I do anything else, let's just collapse that. Get in the habit of resetting the X-Forms to make sure your mesh is nice and clean. Even if you don't fully understand what's going on there, press F1, read up on it. Even if you don't understand that, regardless, always do that. What it will do, it will try and revert your mesh back to some form of default level, trying to remove all the scale and all the multiple translations you've done. And you will find that the majority of times where you press peel in your unwrap editor and it goes wayward, the reset X forms will guaranteed fix that. So just get, get in the habit of doing that nice and early on. So I'm just going to go to my unwrap editor now. Let's expand that out. Select all the polys, make sure I've turned off ignore back facing and just press peel. Rescale and pack. So what we see here is the top and the bottom, or one of these may be the top and the bottom, but ultimately the sides and the top and the bottom. So let's try and indicate what's what on this. So that there is our top. This here is our bottom. Let's leave those two uh, detached. And I think with the sides, we might as well just connect two sides together. So I'm just going to stitch this one with this. Just going to press stitch. The reason why I'm doing this is because I need to peel it anywhere, so it's a bit pointless going to Tools, Stitch Selected, and then turning the bias down to zero. I've had to press five or six buttons, whereas in, and I'm still going to have to press peel at that point, whereas just by doing a quick double click and a quick stitch and knowing fine well the peel will resolve those issues. Oops, Daisy, we should stitch it, I suppose, shouldn't we? So just do that again. Quick stitch there, and then press peel. There we are. So that would do that. But let's just do that with the other one. Double click, stitch. In this instance what we don't want is we don't want that one, we want this one here. So double click, stitch and a quick peel. Ultimately peel a lot again, rescale and pack. Naturally it's hardly the world's most optimal UV at this stage so we might as well just go in there and just tidy this up a touch. To try and maximize the UV space. I 
Let's drop that in the center. We don't necessarily need to worry too much about all the other areas if it's a case that we can get away with uh, scaling it so it's only using half, then use half. And you can certainly make another rock texture and that could be uh, placed directly above it. So arguably two rocks on one texture. But that will do us for the time being. That's okay. I'm going to triple check to make sure nothing is averted. It shouldn't be. And nothing is overlapped. So those two processes are crucial before we do anything else. It's going to collapse through on that. So now we're in a position where we can just go and do the bake. Get in the habit of resetting uh, the pivot, put it back in the center so it's not in the middle of nowhere. Ultimately, we do need to put it at the bottom so we can uh, place it in the UE4. Time being, I'm just going to leave it there. I'm just going to save that as well. It would make sense to do so. And we'll call this rock base test. Five. So remember how it crashed previously, so again, just save the damn thing. Zero rendered texture, same process as before. You should all remember this by now. Automatics on there, add the normal map. 2048 is fine. And I'm just going to overwrite one of my desktop. Agree with that. I'm going to go to my cage, change it point to point reset, and just adjust this so it goes above or exceeds the boundaries of that high poly. You can see here it hasn't, so we just need to push that up a touch more. There, that will do the job. And just press render. Great stuff. There's nothing in red, there's a slight little minor issue over here in red. I can live with that, not necessarily a, a major issue that one. So let's just duplicate this across and apply it and make sure it looks okay. I'm just going to collapse on that. Okay, and try and create some form of shader that makes sense. My material editor is currently on compact purely because of the fact that it's easier for me to drag that across and instance it uh, on the compact material editor, the individual textures on the displace modifier than it is trying to do it on the slate. I'm sure there is a way of doing it to this, on the slate, but for the life of me, I can't figure it out. So let's just make a new shader. And again, personal preference, but it would make sense uh, to make it relatively dark with some form of specular. And then let's just apply that. Yep, that's fine. So now simply, usual process of just defining what map we want and where that is. Sign that. Triple check that. And turn on really stick with maps. Give it a few seconds to do its thing. And there you have it, we now have uh, a piece of rock which ultimately we can shape into many other variations of rock and it's it's been generated quite easily. It's not been difficult to do, we're just trying to use Max in a clever fashion rather than trying to uh, pop this into ZBrush and then we're saying, hey morning, trying to knock out a rock and ultimately you can do it very very quickly using something else. There's no it's not cheating or anything along those lines, it's just using a bit of common sense. Naturally with this, we can always go back in there and make modifications to it. Probably not ultimately that wise because as we're stretching this around, then it's safe to say that you know the uh, text rate is being changed. But it still gives us an element of flexibility if we were to just quickly produce another variant of this rock. We could just use that. So that will do for this particular tutorial. In the next step, we are going to essentially take our low poly over here and our high poly, and we're going to put them both into Substance Painter and then bake them out and then try and export in the correct format into UE4 and most probably Marmoset as well, just so we know what the process is.